Find measures using tangents and secants, and we have three theorems. This is 12.5a, the first part of this lesson. So right away for your notes, I have theorem 12.51, and the theorem says if a tangent and a secant, so here we have a tangent and a secant, or it could be a tangent and a chord, if they intersect on a circle at the point of tangency, then the measure of the angle formed is half the measure of its intercepted arc. So tangent BC and secant BA intersect at B right here. That's the point of tangency. So that's our hypothesis. So our conclusion is going to be that the measure of angle ABC, this angle measure, is equal to half the measure of arc AB, this green arc. This angle measure is equal to half the measure of this green arc. And this theorem, theorem 12.5.1, connects arc measures and the measures of tangent secant angles with tangent chord angles. And we can use tangent secant and tangent chord angles to find each measure. For this one, it wants us to find the measure of angle BCD. BCD. So it would be this secant and this tangent. And the measure of angle BCD is half the measure of arc BC. We just learned that in our theorem. And it's telling us that this is 142 degrees, so it's half 142 degrees, so it's 71 degrees. We need to find the measure of arc ABC. So we're going from here all the way around to here. And if you notice, we've got a right angle box here, don't we? So we know ACD is a 90 degree angle, it's a right angle. And the measure of angle ACD, this red and teal one, is equal to half the measure of arc ABC. We know it's 90 degrees, so it's equal to half. This 90 degrees is equal to half the measure of arc ABC. We can remove the fraction by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal, 2 over 1, or we could just multiply it by 2. We could even do it in our head and say if 90 is half, then 180 must be whole. So we know that the measure of arc ABC is 180 degrees. Now that brings us to our second theorem, 12.5.2. And the theorem says if two secants or two chords intersect in the interior of a circle, then the measure of each angle formed is half the sum of the measures of its intercepted arcs. So here we have chord AD and chord BC, they intersect at E. So the measure of angle AEB, this angle right here, is going to be equal to half times the measure of arc AB plus the measure of arc CD. So we would find their sum, multiply it by half, and that would be that angle measure. They intersect in the interior, see, interior of the circle, then it's half the sum. So if they intersect in the interior, we add. Here we have a two-column proof for theorem 12.5.2. It's given that chord AD, right here, and chord BC intersect at E. They want us to prove that the measure of angle 1 right here is equal to half times the measure of arc AB plus the measure of arc CD. We have our statement column and our reason column. Statement number 1 is that AD and BC intersect at E. That was given. Number 2, we draw BD right here. The reason, two points determine a line. For our third statement, the measure of angle 1 is equal to the measure of angle EDB, that's this little angle right here, okay? So this angle 1 is equal to this angle measure right here plus this angle measure right here, EBD. Our reasoning is the exterior angle theorem. This angle measure and this angle measure E would total 180 degrees, wouldn't it? So this angle and this angle 
are equal to this angle. Number four says the measure of angle EDB is equal to half the measure of arc AB. We can see this angle right here has this arc on the circle, doesn't it? And EBD has this arc CD, doesn't it? So it's half the measure of arc CD. That's the inscribed angle theorem from 12.4a. Number five brings us to the measure of angle one, this one right here, is equal to half the measure of arc AB plus half the measure of arc CD. That's substitution. And since it's half measure a arc AB plus half measure arc CD, we can use the distributive property to write half times the measure of arc AB plus measure of arc CD, which was what we needed to prove, isn't it? If you're confused about any of these, there'll be links to these videos in the description, okay? We can find angle measures inside a circle. We need to find the measure of angle SQR, SQR, so it's this one right here. The measure of angle SQR is equal to half times the measure of arc PT, this 32 degrees, plus the measure of arc SR, this 100 degrees, so we add them together, we get 132, it's equal to half that, so we know that that angle measure SQR is 66 degrees. We have two secants, they're intersecting on the interior of the circle at Q, so we're going to add these together. So here's our third theorem for your notes, theorem 12.5.3, and it's telling us if a tangent and a secant, we have a tangent and a secant, or two tangents, or two secants intersect in the exterior of a circle, then the measure of the angle formed is half the difference of the measures of its intercepted arcs. So in the previous theorem, it told us that if they intersected in the interior, then it was half the sum. We would add them together. Now it's telling us that if they intersect in the exterior, it's going to be half the difference, so we're going to subtract. So for angle one here, it would be half times the measure of arc AD, and we would subtract arc BD. For two, it would be half times the measure of EHG minus the measure of arc EG. And for three, measure of angle three, it would be half times the measure of JN minus the measure of arc KM. We can find measures using tangents and secants. It wants us to find the value of x. It's showing us it's x degrees. Well, x is equal to half times the measure of arc rs minus the measure of arc qs. It's telling us this is 174 degrees and this is 98 degrees. We do our subtraction because they're intersecting on the exterior, so we're going to use subtraction, aren't we? We get 76. Half of that is 38 degrees. We know that x is equal to 38, so this angle measure must be 38 degrees. Now this one may seem a little trickier because if you look, it wants us to find the value of x, and it's giving us this arc right here, this eg, but it's not giving us the arc measure for this one. We know x is equal to half times the measure of arc EHG minus the measure of arc EG, but we have no value here. So what are we going to subtract? Well, if you look very closely at these arcs, EHG goes from this point and wraps all the way around to here, and then EG is all of this, so actually we've got a 360 degree circle. If this is 360 degrees, we can subtract the 132 degrees to know that this is 228 degrees. If this is 228 degrees, we now have the numbers to subtract. We do 228 minus that 132, we get 96. It's equal to half of that, so we know x is equal to 48, and we know that that angle is 48 degrees. So be on the lookout on your homework or on tests. If 
it's asking you to do this and it's not giving the other arc measure? Is it making an entire circle? Is it 360 degrees? Can you subtract that to find out what that is and then do your subtraction? So for real quick recap, theorem 12.5.2 told us if they're intersecting in the interior, then we're going to add. And if they're intersecting in the exterior, we're going to subtract to find those angle measures. The second part of this lesson is about angle relationships in circles. That's 12.5b. Then we're going to move on to 12.6, and we're going to talk about segment relationships, chord, chord, and products. So now you should know when to add or subtract. It's when they intersect in the interior or exterior of the circle. I hope you're doing well. I'll see you next time. Bye.